Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Well, most courts are closed, but some courts are trying to stay open and at least conduct some business. And there are things that courts can do if they want to remotely. So some courts have thought, well, with modern technology we got these days, why not conduct hearings remotely? And that is a judge might hop on some system that allows conferencing. There's a bunch of different systems you can do that with. And um, uh, one judge in particular who's been conducting hearings that way finally snapped <laughs> after too many attorneys apparently appeared on camera in their pajamas. So, you know, you, you should always dress for the occasion. And even though you're working from home, if you're working from home and you're going to do a conference call with a video hookup with a judge, <laughs> put your pants on. Judge slams lawyers for appearing shirtless or staying in bed for video conferencing hearings. Um, <laughs> Richard sent this to me, although quite a few people did, uh, out of the evening standard. And, and this story has made it across the pond. A judge has hit out at lawyers for not dressing appropriately for video hearings as he told how one appeared shirtless <laughs> and another remained in bed under the covers. <laughs> you should be so glad that you're not going into court that you should at least get up and put your pants on. Florida Judge Dennis Bailey said it was remarkable how many attorneys appear inappropriately on camera for hearings using the Zoom video conferencing app. Uh, I've also heard other stories about Zoom in the news. Look up uh, Zoom security and see what pops up. In a letter published by the local bar association, the judge made a plea for those showing up for video hearings to get out of bed and put on some clothing. <laughs> hearings across the world are being held over a video conference due to the social distancing and lockdown measures. The Broward Circuit judge wrote, it is remarkable how many attorneys appear inappropriately on camera. And he, and he capitalized attorneys, all caps. And I've said before, I've, I've seen people show up in court, but it's usually litigants or just people who show up, the defendants, you know, show up in court wearing T-shirts and shorts and flip-flops and so on. And, you know, I, I know some people look at that and go, well, Steve, some people, you know, might not be able to, you know, buy, you know, a nice suit for their hearing in court. No one's saying that. Just look like you put in the effort. But when you're still under the covers, snuggled up, and no one's thinking you put in the effort. The judge added, one male lawyer appeared shirtless. <laughs> and one female attorney appeared still in bed, still under the covers. <laughs> I'm assuming those are two different settings, though. I don't think it was the same uh, covers. He said he would not make any exceptions for lawyers lounging in the Florida sunshine, either writing, putting on a beach cover-up won't cover up that you're poolside in a bathing suit. So if you have a hearing, like I said, and it's going to be in front of a, most likely a laptop, take the laptop someplace, put it someplace where it's got an, either a nice background or a neutral background, and at least from the waist up, you know, you're, you're, you pretend you're a newsman, okay? <laughs> Since courthouses shut down on March 16th to help slow what's going on, Broward County's judicial system has actually held over 1,200 Zoom meetings of a legal nature that have involved 14,000 participants. So if you want to do the math on that, on average, more than 10 different parties per Zoom call. Now, that was reported by WPLG Television out of Miami. Great TV station. I've got friends who work there. Judge Bailey said he will not hold a complicated trial over the video conferencing site given the technology's shortcomings, but apparently he tried. Often lawyers are not looking at their screens but down at their files, their outlines and notes, or simply out the window and cannot see the judge hollering, stop, stop, because an objection has been made and the audio stays with the witness rather than obeying the judge. So for those of you who are curious, <laughs> how much of this can be done remotely? Well, it depends on how much willing you know, participants are willing to put on their clothing. I mean, <laughs> apparently. And, you know, I can tell you, as an attorney, when courts are open for business and litigation is ensuing and everything's happening at the speed of litigation, which is glacially slow, and, you know, you look at your calendar for tomorrow and you have a, you have a, you got to be in court. Nine o'clock in the morning, it says court. And you look at the court and you go, okay, and you start doing the math in your head. Okay, when do I have to get up, get dressed, go to the court? I remember bringing my stuff home the night before, blah, 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 blah. And then... When the court calls a couple days before and says, hey, you got a hearing on 
nine o'clock in the morning on that on that day. Do you want to do it by phone? Most people are so happy and grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it means that you don't need to do the stuff where you bring the file home, get all dressed up, go straight to court. You know, you might have to get up earlier depending on what the court is. Then you go to your office and do your work for the day. This way you can just go to your office, do the hearing, get it over with. And if nothing else, you just save the commute time. Okay? But it it is such a convenience when you can do it by phone. But... The weird part is that people are now in this mindset. It's like, oh, the courts are closed, but we're going to hold this hearing. No, no. If you guys are holding a hearing, the court's not closed for you. Okay? It's closed for everyone else. And the fact that you're doing it over the video conferencing app doesn't make it any less serious. Okay? So, you know, I I know it might seem kind of strange to suggest, and people are going to ask, Steve, would you really put on a suit and a tie and sit in this chair for a teleconference with a judge. I would. I would. And I tell myself, the good news is I don't have to go out and get in my car, drive to the court, walk around the court, go through security, go sit down in the courtroom, wait till my case is called, get up, spend three minutes on the record, and then reverse the process and go back either to my office or home. I can get dressed, come in here and sit down, do the hearing for three minutes, get up and walk out. Look at all the time I saved. Even though I put on a suit for three minutes, it was still worth it. <laughs> so I think part of the problem is, like I said, the mindset where people are just going, hey, you know something, everything's closed. And they're and they're in that thing. It's, it's kind of like if you ask a kid to read a book during summer vacation, right? When the school bell goes off on the last day of class, the brain goes into a different mode. It's like you shift into a different gear. And you don't plan on shifting back up into that gear until the first day of school. So there's this downtime in the middle. And so I've heard of teachers who've tried to assign reading <laughs> during the summer. And don't get me wrong, I know some people read for fun. Some people actually do. I write books. But the point is that the mindset that we are in the situation where people are at home and locked down, we can't go anyplace. But if you have to attend court, even by teleconference, you have to pretend you're going to court because you are. You're just doing it virtually. So there you go. So again, the the message from the uh, judge uh, is, would you please, please (laughs) put on your pants. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I don't know where I'm going from here, but I promise it won't be boring.